I was not meant to be filming today, so I feel I look a little dishevelled. Um, we're all gonna ignore it. I have been seeing these videos floating about since early August. I saw them in August and I thought, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not, we are not doing these videos until October. I wanted to hold off and film this video in October because to me, autumn, fall doesn't really start until October. That being said, England is now gloomy. She is no longer warm. I mean, she was barely warm anyway, but it is gloomy, it is grey, <laughs> it is raining. Um, so I've decided it's time. Summer is sadly officially over. And we're into autumn, which is maybe my favourite season. Honestly, it's almost kind of perfect timing as well, because I have been saying for however long how much of a romance slump I am in, and I'm in a thriller mood. And I don't know if that's just because, now that I think about it, maybe it is literally just because of the like change in seasons and the weather. Maybe that was always going to happen, but it kind of like worked out perfectly. I have for you today 13 books that I am planning to read this fall slash autumn. We call it autumn in the UK, but I know that the majority of my audience are American. Should we just get right on into it? I feel like I'm rambling. The first book that is absolutely at the top of my have to read this fall, and this is required reading. This is getting read this fall. Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. If you've never been here before, you won't know, but if you've been here probably even once before, you absolutely will. I love Sally Rooney. I am such a Sally Rooney fan girl. I think she's great. Conversation with Friends, Normal People, those are her other two books, both five stars for me. Adore with my entire heart. Love so much. My best friend just read this and she really, really liked it. And we often have similar book tastes, so I think I'm going to equally love it. I do think this one is a little bit different from her other two, but that being said, I also don't really know what it's about. And I don't need to know. I will read anything that that woman writes but the reason that this is such required reading is because intermezzo is about to come out when i tell you i'm not somebody who gets like particularly excited about new releases i'm not very like switched on to new releases i don't really follow them if i'm being totally honest they'll just come out and everyone starts reading them and then i'm like oh i want to read that too i'll buy it i cannot wait for intermezzo to come out but I really want to read this first, so I've kind of read them in order. And then I will have read all of her books in one year. So this is absolutely top of the TBR. Then the book that is absolutely bottom of my TBR, but I do, I need to read it this fall. <laughs> Carrie. Carrie by Stephen King. This is on my 24 books to read in 2024. I have been avoiding it like the plague. I am so scared to read this book. I've never seen the film. I don't like horror films. I'm scared of absolutely everything. I don't really read horror as a genre, although I'm kind of getting a little bit more into it. I find that I'm better with horror books than I am with horror films. The thing that I don't like about horror films is all the like jump scares and like, you know, when the music starts building up and you know something's coming, but you don't know what. That's the bit I don't like. So obviously you don't get that in books. I am going to read this. <laughs> I'm going to read this this fall, but I am a wee bit terrified. But I've owned it for so long and I just think if I don't read it during autumn, maybe October I'll save this for, but if I don't read it in like autumn-y time, Halloween-y time, I just don't think I'm ever going to get to it. I just need to get over myself and get to it because I am nervous. Gosh, those two books could not be any different. And speaking of different, I literally forgot that I need to read this, but I do. Um, this is Cursed by Marissa Meyer. This is part of a duology, which is the Gilded duology, which is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. I read that book so long ago. It was right at the start of my channel, so it must have been, maybe it's only a year. It honestly feels like longer. And I have this gorgeous edition of the second one, these gorgeous sprayed edges. I'm absolutely obsessed with it, but I just, kind of keep forgetting that I own it and I do need to get it. She's quite a hefty book. Yeah, nearly 500 pages. That might be why I'm avoiding it as well. But I want to get to it. The first one ended off on 
craziness. I'm not gonna lie, I can't really remember the details of the first one. It was kind of like a fairy tale retelling. It's quite dark, but there was this whole bit in the middle that was kind of just very like fairy tale esque, kind of like flowery writing. But I really don't know what's gonna happen in this one because, as I say, the last one ended off on a absolute madness and I just think it's about time that we because this is only a duology so if I finish this I finish the series and that'll be like the second series I've ever finished is that true I think it is I think the only series I've ever finished is the family upstairs duology by Lisa Jewell that's really bad to be fair I don't read a lot of series but when I do I never finish them so anyway I'm rambling but I would like to finish this finally and on the same vein of finishing series. Yes, yes, I know, I know. It took me so long to finally read the first one and I loved it, I had such a good time. This book is like 700 pages. <laughs> I'm incredibly scared. I know that this is a lot of people's favorite, but she's just massive i am not much of a fantasy reader i have said this time and time again i've enjoyed the ones that i've read i've read maybe five i've read like the big ones i've read akatar and fourth wing and night palace i've read like the big popular ones and i enjoyed actually all of those books but i still avoid the genre like anything i think it just it just intimidates me I have to use my brain, which I don't like doing, and they're long, they're often very, very long. But I know this is a lot of people's favourites and I just need to get to it. But I do think if I'm gonna read this this fall, I'm probably gonna have to re-pick up Akatar. <laughs> Cause it's just been, I read it at the start of this year, but I just, I don't know, I just feel like it's been too long. This one and possibly the next one should also be on this TBR, but I don't know if I'm committing to that. I don't even know if I'm committing to this. No, I am, well, mm. I'm trying to commit to this. Maybe I should just do a video where I try and read all of them in like a week. That might be ambitious, in like a couple of weeks. I don't know, I'm scared of it. This is actually, why have I made this such a challenging TBR? <laughs> Talking of fantasy, one that has actually really been, like every time I see it on my shelves, I'm like, I actually really want to pick this up soon. That is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. As I just said, I've read Night House by her and really really enjoyed it it was a very like dense book like it was you had to really focus there was a lot going on it was very dark it was just like again brain power but this is one of her most beloved books and it's a duology and again i never finished series but if it's only two books i feel like i can do it and i own both because i have thrifted the second book so there is literally no reason not to get to this. I won't bore you with the synopsis because I just assume everyone and their mum has read it. But I know it's good fun family. I think it's something to do with like, are they all like thieves and like criminals and stuff and they like band together. I know it's like kind of a heist plot, which is not necessarily my thing. I'm not much of a, I don't reach for books that are like heist based. But I like her writing, she's a very good writer, and this is just such a beloved book that I just feel like, I feel like it's time. Okay, moving away from fantasy, a book that I have owned for quite a long time, and it's such a tiny book, so I don't know why I've not got to it yet, but if this cover does not give autumnal, I don't know what does. On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. Author of this is a poet, I believe. Um, and I believe this is like a proper like gorgeous poetic lyrical book which I have to be in the right mood for but I do think I could really really like this and it's from a son to a mother who cannot read it's a letter and it's all about the Vietnam War and the impact that that has had on um, the main character and the family. I think it's probably going to be as the title suggests absolutely gorgeous but also really really sad and dark. Um, which I love. I'm a big fan of sad books. So this next book has probably been recommended to me more than any other book since I've started my channel. Every time I vaguely mention this book, mention this author, mention a book that's kind of vaguely sort of similar-ish, not even really, I will have comments saying you have to read this book. I did a while back a my top five books of the year and I asked what were some of your guys' favourite books of the year. Again, this was the one that was mentioned the most. People love this book and I wanna find out why. So 
we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I have never read from this author and I really, really want to. Also, is this book not stunning? It is another long book, which I will say, I avoid long books like the plague. How long is she? Over 500 pages. Yeah, I'm a 300 pages or under kind of a gal. Love a short book, love a short chapter. It's set in France in 1714, so I'm guessing historical fiction. Obviously historical fiction. And from what I know about this, Addy LaRue makes a deal to live forever and then everyone forgets her. I think it's like the consequence of that. She meets people and then they forget her. The next book on Autumn's TBR, for the life of me, I cannot find my copy of it. Where she is, we may never know. I'm hoping I find it in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, it's not getting read. Um, I'm, it will be around here somewhere. My, my books are a bit dishevelled at the moment. My bookcases are in disarray. They need organising. But I want to finally read The Maidens because I've never read from this author. And on that, also on the TBR, is The Silent Patient. Because for some reason, I want to read this before I read The Maidens. I don't really know why, but The Maidens screams autumn to me. I know it's like dark academia and it's sat, is it set at Oxford University? Or it's set at like a prestigious English university and there's like a mad mystery. It's giving if we were villains vibes. I don't know if they're remotely similar, but to me, the covers and the like, the blurbs feel similar. But I, I just, I can't even tell you why. I just feel like I should read this first. This one came out first, and I do have a feeling that the main character in this, the like therapist character appears in this one. I don't think you need to read this one first. Like I'm pretty sure they're completely separate. It's just like a little cameo, but I just, I want to read this one first. But this one is about a woman who, shoots her husband in the head and then doesn't talk and then the therapist is trying to figure out what happened um and i know that this has the plot twist of the century like everyone says this is the best plot twist ever so <laughs> i'm excited for this i've also heard it has short chapters oh it, oh it does have short chapters we're talking like three page chapters so i'm gonna read this and then i'm gonna read the maidens those are both on the TBR. Right, ending off strong with a few thrillers that I want to get to this month. As I say, I am in a thriller mood. I don't know why. I feel like I like psychological thrillers. I'm not the biggest fan of like murder mystery or like, I prefer thrillers to mysteries in the sense that normally thrillers are written more like present tense, like things are happening in the like now timeline and we're kind of going along with it and it has that kind of like anxiety provoking feeling whereas mysteries I don't know if I'm butchering the like definitions of these genres but this is what they are to me whereas mysteries are more like you're figuring out something that's happened in the past so the dramatic thing has already happened personally I'm more of a thriller person I like the odd mystery but I lean I think more towards thriller so I'm hoping all of these fall more into that category, but who knows. First up, we have Hidden Pictures, which is another one that a lot of people have recommended to me. People love this. I bought it solely because it had pictures in it. And I love a book with mixed media. I think this might actually be more of a horror. This follows Mallory. She is babysitting for a five-year-old called Teddy and Teddy is drawing cute little pictures and then those pictures start getting dark and gruesome and I guess she's trying to figure out why. And I'm hoping, because again, this is a long-ish book, sort of, yeah, it's under 400 pages, but because there are pictures, I just think it will be a really, really quick one. I hope. Another thriller that I have owned for a hot minute, I found this in a charity shop. This is Who Cares If They Die by Wendy Dranfield. Um, and I know absolutely nothing about it. Should we look it up on Goodreads? So, oh, it's, it's, um, got, it's got a good average. So it's currently got, as we're filming this, 1,648 ratings, and it is averaging a 4.26, which is really good. Cool. From what I know about this, we are following, I think there are a bunch of deaths in this society but all of the deaths are people who won't be missed, supposedly. It says, they are all women living on the fringes of society, addicts and criminals who will miss them. I don't know, it's one that I picked up literally years ago and I don't think it's ever been on a TBR. I don't think it's ever been in a, like a video at all. 
I don't know, it's just one of those ones that sat on my shelf for so long. And I was kind of going through looking for books to put on my full TBR and I thought, why have I not got to this yet? Um, and that is why. That tiny little tear on the front cover, I think that is the reason. Uh, so I need to get over this. This is very much a read or unhaul situation because I've owned this for so long and I think it's going to be good and it's great average. So I think it's finally time we got to this. And last, but most definitely not least, we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I have never read a Lucy Foley book. I know she's got a new one out. I think it just came out. It's called The Midnight Feast, which my library has the audiobook for, but there is a long waiting list. So I think I'm going to join that waiting list. But I thought in the meantime, I would read this. I think this might be her most popular one. I don't know. It's set off the Irish coast, love already and it's about a wedding. It says 13 guests, one body, one guest won't leave this wedding alive. We have a wedding, we have an island, we have a death. Does that not scream full TBR to you? Right, there you have it, short and sweet, done. I'm sure there are plenty more books that will get read this fall, but these are, I guess, either ones that I'm super excited to get to or ones that I'm like, they need to be read in autumn otherwise I know I won't read them. These are the ones that I would like to get to particularly around like Halloween I would love to do some form of like spooky video where I read like maybe like only horror books. I don't even know how many horror books I own. Let me know which books are on your full TBR and if you've read any of these let me know your thoughts. Mm -hmm.